We are in Benicia, California, a beautiful city of 27,000 residents located on the Carquina Strait in the southern part of Solano County in the San Francisco Bay Area. Benicia is home to two community gardens and a community orchard. The Benicia Community Gardens is a long-standing, almost entirely volunteer-run 501c3 nonprofit organization created in 1999. The organization started right here in Benicia about 20 years ago as, uh, as a community garden. And over the years, we grew organically to include more community gardens, a community orchard, um, uh, community-supported agriculture where we work with our farmers, educational programs, and we were looking for a right model to introduce to our backyards. Permaculture was a perfect fit for our goal. Uh, we received a grant from the Benicia Community Sustainability Commission to bring uh, the concept of permaculture to this town and to build seven demonstration food forests while educating people on the water capturing techniques and the principles of permaculture. We will show you all the elements of water capturing and you could enjoy the results of these efforts in the community. Permaculture is a system of agricultural and social design utilizing patterns observed in natural ecosystems. The foundations of permaculture are the three ethics, earth care, people care, and fair share, or the return of the surplus of abundance, which guide the use of 12 associated design principles that make up permaculture. Special attention is paid to the water movement in every ecosystem. Backyard permaculture integrates contour swales, the capture of roof water in the ground, laundry to landscape, gray water systems, and other creative, small-scale, simple, and affordable tools and techniques. Permaculture designers believe that through intelligent landscape design, it is often possible to go beyond conservation of water to the actual recharge of the groundwater supplies. Fifteen families from Benicia offered their homes as demonstration sites for permaculture food forests. Of these, seven homes were selected, and in the course of two years, seven demonstration food forests were established, one at each of the selected homes. Today, we are visiting one of them. This home is called Beyond the Birds and the Bees. Sustainability starts at home. We wanted to create a sustainable environment for our family, for our children, and for our community. By starting at home, we were able to open our home to our community, to our neighbors, to start creating a place where we introduce these ideas of permaculture and growing a little bit for ourselves, growing a little bit for our neighbors, um, meeting new people who are interested in the same things. And these people have become our friends. Some of them have become our family and have become very important people in our lives over the last few years in this project. People are doing it and they're doing it right here and they're doing it right now. And that if we can do it here, maybe they can do it a couple doors down or maybe someone they know can do it in the next town over. And maybe all's not lost. The source of all water is rain or snow. Once the rain falls on unprepared ground, it flows off of it quickly. In our urban environment, most of this precious water is captured by the city's storm management system as it drains off of our properties. A swale is another word for a ditch. It is about one foot deep and wide. The length of a swale depends on the size of the garden. The bottom of the swale is leveled so rainwater collects and spreads evenly across it and begins to slowly sink into the earth. As you are digging a swale, you put soil on the lower side of it to create a berm. Trees are then planted in the berm. This is how the backyard looked when this garden was installed. 
here is this is one of the two swales that we actually installed on this property. As you can see, they're nice and wide. They're running about a foot deep, full of chipped up mulch. We've got a second one up here, so the water that's coming down the hill is caught not only from the rain actually falling on the land in those swales, we've actually got water being directed from inside the house as well. So these are paths, are indeed are the swales. That is what's saving the, uh, the soil. It's going to help us retain the water and it makes a great pathway through your garden. So the so secret is in the ground here and what I want to do is kind of show you what's going on. As we dig into it, we can see it crumbles up, it's earthy, it's brown, there's stuff going on in it. It smells amazing, it smells rich and full and fertile and that's what we want. And that's created by just using the secondary water that Heather is saving out of her home. So we've managed to feed this entire thing with secondary water which saves money, saves water, saves the soil as well. So it's a win-win situation for all of us. Let's turn our attention to the roof of the house. When rain falls on a roof, it drains down to the gutter systems. In most urban houses, the gutters are connected to the city storm sewers. We are going to capture this rainwater as well. Thing. But we've also got this great thing called a roof. Now there's about 900 square feet on top of that roof that's going to come down at least three gutters. Now we've got two right here and what we did is we capped them off and put an adjuster in there so it could actually run straight into the ground and not into the water catchment system. We want to keep the water away from any treatment plants and we want to keep it from going back to any place else. We've got to fill up the aquifer We've got to save the water on site, and that's what we're going to do next. We're going to cut the existing gutter pipe on the downspout, and we're going to attach a little L bracket. And basically what that does is just takes the water from here. You attach the different pipes that you want, depending on how far you're going to go, and the water is then readjusted back to your property. These typically can be cut with a simple hacksaw. It's not a real difficult thing. These parts are under $10 at your local Lowe's, so it's super easy to do. The secondary source of water for this garden that we discussed has been rain. In our Mediterranean climate, rain comes in the winter. So how is this garden watered during the dry months? Laundry to landscape gray water systems redirect the water from my washing machine right here by a three-way valve, which is right here. This valve goes from my washing machine, drains the water, that would normally go to the sanitary sewer. See, this little uh, note tells me when my water is draining to the sewer or to ugh, the gray water system, which drains this water to my garden and lets my plants get water instead of the sewer system, which then has to be treated with lots of chemicals and lots of effort by the sewer system. Um, this is where the gray water exits from my washing machine. The washing machine, when the drain cycle happens, then drains the water out this little white pipe right here. And then, through the magic of gravity, the water enters this little blue pipe right down here. And this little blue pipe snakes through the garden and feeds to each plant that is fitted with a gray water basin. So each gray water basin has an opening. The water goes into the basin, drains into some mulch or sand, some sort of filtration material, where the water then soaks into the ground and feeds the plant at the base of that gray water basin. It's all very simple. 
So we're going to harvest all of the secondary water that we have access to. We're going to keep it on the site and we're going to choose plants with care. We're going to choose plants that have beneficial relationship with our site. We're going to choose native plants that will do well with our site. We're going to choose plants that will work well together. We're going to choose plants that will offer benefits to our family and to our community. We're going to choose plants that offer a bounty to our community that we're going to use. We're going to choose the plants that we like. Uh, we're going to invite our community in to share the bounty. We're going to invite our community in to learn more about how we do this. So it's about the water, it's about the soil, and it's about the people.